Hello world, thank you for still watching as last time we focused on what affects us politically. This time we'll take a more intimate look at what speaks to our souls and hearts, the arts. On to our first story. Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein faces up to 20 years in prison on charges of rape and misconduct. Over 75 women have accused the veteran producer of sexual harassment. Weinstein is the founder of Miramax and Weinstein Company, which has produced films such as Pulp Fiction, Rambo, among other classic films. Former U.S. President Barack Obama and his wife, the former First Lady Michelle Obama, have landed a contract with global streaming powerhouse Netflix. The couple are expected to produce content for the streaming service that promotes greater empathy and understanding between people. On to our main story. Ilmatic is a term well known by avid hip-hop fans. This is an album that was produced in 1994 by none other than Nasir Jones, otherwise known as Nas. The album gained global, critical, and later commercial acclaim for the then 20-year-old MC for his hard-hitting rhymes and depicting black culture in a way that was never done before. 2018 marks 20 years since it was made and is unsurprisingly still remembered for its mastery. It took the MC four years to write and produce the album, proving the diligence needed to produce quality work. This brews a question for us as artists back home. Do our artists actually invest in excellence in their craft? You can answer through our social media handles as displayed in the screen. The attitude of Kenyans towards their local art has been bittersweet for as long as the Mwananchi can remember. Why do we need to support our own artists? Are they not good enough? Or have we been choked with cultural imperialism? Here is Fardosa Hussein with some Kenyan artists who had something to say. Scientists and intellectuals are known to represent God's mind, but artists are known to reveal God's heart. In as much as their role is important, what do they lack in order to make a living from their craft? I've realized there's a reason why the music is called um, a show business. There's the show and now there's the business. Like there's your art and now there's the business aspect of your art. Like I've realized most people are so passionate about the arts, they forget to be passionate about the, mu the business side of the arts. So I think that's, that's where most, and I've interacted with a lot of artists, that's where most artists go wrong. They lack the business side. Like they lack how to convert that art into money and make a living out of it. If you're going to believe in your craft, then definitely you need to invest in it. So how are you investing in your time? How are you investing in uh, your craft? How are you investing in each and every show that you've been given in order for you to deliver? You see, so uh, first thing first, in order for artists to actually get the money or actually the worth out of it, um, let's say for instance, you can't have um, a 5,000 video shoot and expect to actually rip a 50,000 show. You see? So you need to actually invest in the uh, good quality video so that at least even big uh, company or even corporates or even sponsors can actually even say, let's say for instance, let us invest in this ad because it is well invested. You see, there is work that has been put in it so that at the end of the day, uh, you're going to get the same effort, the same uh, benefits that you actually invested in at the first time. The answer seems to be clear. Lots of diligence and patience is needed to make significant steps as an artist, even in anything else. Um, Fardosa, what do you think needs to change among artists and Kenyans alike? Thank you, George. I'll look at it from two perspectives. One, from a perspective where a person or an artist has seeked uh, guidance from an institution that is enrolled into an institution and then there's the other person who has nurtured himself or herself so for that person who has six uh, institutional guidance you'll find that most of the time uh, schools of art don't take the time to teach artists or creatives on how to make the most out of their art and for instance uh, in my case you will see that um, I'm good at photography, but the thing is, 
I don't know how to, to come up with a rate card. Yes, YouTubers will try to show you several ways you can come up with a rate card. But the thing is, these are some things I wish I was taught in school. I wish I was taught how to come up with a business plan specifically or a financial plan specifically for my artwork. Because nowadays you'll find yourself just going for any amount of money you offered or amount you offered because you actually don't know your worth. But if I was taught in school, what measures I should take in come up, coming up with a rate card or a financial plan, maybe I will be in a better position. That is a valid point. <laughs> And on to our social media handles on do our artists invest in excellence in their craft. Jerry Shields says, honestly, I don't. I think our local artists have adopted a westernized culture that does not reflect ours. They are lazy and copy what they see on the internet. They are talented artists, but where is their sense of originality? Just a thought. <laughs> Well, that can also be added to the point I was saying earlier about cultural imperialism. Is it really true? Thank you for your comments. Clearly, we are vocal about the arts. Among our guests today, we have recording artist Paminas Gaita. And uh, Paminas, thank you for being here. What do you think entails excellence in the arts? Is it the money? So I think um, excellence is a relative term and it really depends on who is defining it because everyone has a different and a varied definition of what excellence is. So it really depends on the artist because you see like you might have a different uh, definition of what excellence is from an artist. Um, for example, let's see an artist uh, doing music and you may be like uh, this artist is only pursuing this music, you know. For some other reasons, but the artist, in his own mind, is doing it for excellence, for more, more for excellence than for commercial, for commercial gain. Uh, so I really think it, it really depends on the artist and the way they define excellence, because um, and and the end, if they really want to pursue that excellence, so the artist had to sit down with themselves and think: uh, Am I pursuing excellence? Is this excellence? And uh, do I, do I want to follow it? And if I don't want to follow it, what will I do? So will I just pursue music for commercial gain? And so they do it. So it really depends on the artist. And um, again, if, if you really can't take uh, this choice from the artist because by doing so, it means that uh, you, it, it really stops being art because art really means that the artist can really express he or herself, himself or herself uh, in, in, in the way that they want. Thank you, pa Paminas. And, um we also have Manasseh, who's also a recording artist. And um, Manasseh, what do you think about what Paminas has said? Do you agree or disagree with that? Yeah, you know, I think, George, I'd like to... I think, let me say I disagree with that. Um, personally, I believe there are four ends to, um, to why you're doing what you're doing. And one of them, I would say, as Christian is God. Number two is your art. Number three is uh, yourself. Um, and number four, money. So if God is the end of your art, then you know all you do is to please Him. Number two, if art is the end of your art, then all you do is for the excellence of your art. If money is the end, then all you do is for um, you know for profit. And if you are the end of your art, then you do what you do uh, for glory, for praise. So let me say, let me speak about money and wealth. If that's the end of, the end of your art, uh, I think there will come a time when um, that will cloud your judgment, and when you know you will start doing everything for money, and also you know things including compromising your art, compromising your excellence. Um, and I believe also it will take a time that money will stop coming, and you'll have you know you'll start being desperate and doing something. Um, extra that is not of you know profit to your art or profit to yourself um, yeah to raise your income or something like that that's why you hear nowadays even songs with um, two lyrics in the chorus you know just because I want to make money and uh, I think it will compromise your art and your excellence yeah. and um, we also have um, George who's also um, a film writer and 
producer on the side. And George, what do you think about the topic in general? Thank you very much, George. Uh, I've heard the opinions of your guests in studio, and my personal take is excellence in the arts can only be measured by the artist and his motivation for creating the art. If your personal motivation with the art is how much money you are supposed to make uh, out of it, then yes, how much money you get from your art is a measure of your excellence. But how long can that be made to sustain itself? And then if your measure of excellence is how wholesome it is for your community, for your society, for your family, if you can get to that point where your art speaks to your community, to your family, even if it's not bringing back all the returns that you're hoping for, then you've excelled. But my personal opinion is the longevity of your art. We're, we're still, and this is, a common, uh, this is a common observation I've made, people who listen to music now are still quoting guys like Tupac, like Nas, like uh, the notorious B.I.G. There's a reason why we're still uh, hacking back to those days, yet we've, we have musicians who've been making music since then and now. But why? Your, that art, that uh, music, the film, the theatre, the photography, it has to have something that touches the inner soul of a, of a human being. Because at the end of the day, in my opinion, art must move you. Art must touch you. Art must communicate something inside of you that you can put in your own words. You must be able to relate to it. And if you can do art like this, if someone can call if someone can recall your first bits of art, if the, I think the best example I have right now is Isa. Isa sadly passed on more than a decade ago, but every year on the anniversary of his death, we're still listening to his music with nostalgia. We're still making younger people who didn't interact with that music listen to it and get uh, the message inside it. That's excellence. Being above, being. Your art must be more than you. Your art must transcend generations. So if you can do that, if you can make art that touches the soul, art that is remembered beyond your time, no matter how much money you make out of it, no matter how much uh, the community speaks about you for your art, you've excelled. Because you've crossed time. You've become one of the greats. Interesting debate there. And here is what you guys had to say about the arts and the debate going on on our, on our social media handles. David Ngethe says a high number of artists put a lot of effort in their craft and given the right space, they can really develop their talent. However, artistic freedom or space has some way to go before this becomes the norm. David Ngethe, I really do agree with you. Regarding arts and the debate and what our opinion leaders had to say and also what you guys had to say on our social media, um, I have to say that I understand that Kenya is yet to have a serious acknowledgement of the importance of our society reflected through works of art. I mean, humans feel before they can even know how to talk. Art is a reflection of life, but people try to create an illusion of the lives they don't live, to please people they don't like, to make money they don't have. And yet they expect to get paid for it. <laughs> Come on, art is truth, pain, struggle. And when artists can be honest with themselves, then maybe Kenyan's wallets will be open to spending their hard-earned money on the artist's hard-earned craft. But that's just me. And that's just the cutting edge. I have been your host, George. Thank you. Until we meet again.